So pretty much the beginning part of this video will just be like pictures and short clips that I took from um, majority of my appointments to be able to get approved for surgery and also um, my pre-op appointment at the hospital. I didn't really get a lot of footage um, at that appointment but I'm going to post all of that stuff. I'm going to play all of those things first and then we'll come back and then just talk to y'all about it. See you in a minute. As I just mentioned, we have all the different centers of excellence. Centers of excellence were set up so that hospitals that do this surgery have a lot of experience with the surgery. They don't want you just going to any hospital that does one every few months because then they're constantly reinventing the system. So I have medications, many people have tried them. There is a role for them um, for some patients, but for the most part, when you stop taking them, what happens? gain all the weight back and they have side effects and Pretty much today is August 1st, 2016, and tomorrow at noon I will be having a gastric bypass. Um, I don't even know how I finally decided to do this junk because mom been asking me about this for the longest and I would always get offended like, I'm cute, like I don't care about being fat, like I still cool niggas, it ain't, ain't no pressure on that. But I done gained more weight since the times of her like at like continually asking me about it. So I just decided like I'm young. Uh, you know, weight can cause you to have a lot of um diseases because of that, like high blood pressure, diabetes, um, polycystic ovarian syndrome, whatever the junk call, um, whole bunch of stuff. And I already was like pre-hypertensive. Um, my A1C, which is like when they check your blood, they check that. And it's kind of like a um, gauge of how your blood sugar has been in like the past three months. Instead of like, you know, when you check, like prick your finger and check, check your blood sugar. That's like right now. That's currently this day. But the A1C is like checks how it's been doing. And the last one I had was okay, but I feel like prob I didn't look at the one from January when I had my blood draw, but I'm pretty sure it went up because I like start eating so much sweet stuff. So yeah, so I probably was getting close to having diabetes as well. And also just like my knees, my one knee, I don't know if y'all know, like when I was in middle school, um, 
I will always put like my knee always start popping out of place and I popped it out one time and I had to get an x-ray and it's like a part of my cartilage is like ate away because my knee popping out so much and my knees be hurting I'm too young to be having problems like that and already in my family like a lot of my family members that had to have knee replacement surgery and mm -mm, I don't want to have to go through all of that stuff so the best solution is to lose weight and yeah everybody keeps saying oh you can work out you can eat right blah 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 whatever but let's be realistic i done did that shit before i done lost weight before and look where i'm at right now back with my double chin like for me personally i know it's unrealistic i know i like i can be disciplined for a certain amount of time but i'm not gonna stick to eating just vegetables and meat my entire life like that's unrealistic i'm gonna want to eat some cake i'm gonna want to eat some fried chicken i'm gonna eat some french fries and that's just real so i feel like personally having gastric bypass like you get dumping syndrome so if i try to eat some ice cream i'm gonna throw up and like some people don't dump or whatever but at least i won't be able to eat as much of it you know what i mean like i would be restricting myself to how much that I can eat without getting sick you know just certain stuff like that so I don't know and not even that like it's multiple people in my family that have had this surgery and I see the outcome and it's all about I don't know it's, the surgery just is itself is not gonna help you like you got to put in some work with it too but at least I feel like doing it myself the results don't come as fast as I wanted to if I have surgery then you know that's an a like it's gonna be dropping off of course i'm not gonna be able to just be right back eating fat backs of hog mall i don't eat that now but you get what i'm saying like whatever so yeah so i had my six i had to for my insurance to pay for it, um or you know pay the 90 percent of surgery or whatever um i had to do a six month supervised diet um I did that starting in January and I had to get pulmonary clearance which is like going to a lung doctor I had to go to a psychologist just to make sure like you mentally stable that you won't end up getting depressed if stuff don't come out how you want it to be because a lot of people think when you get gastric bypass that's just about to be like getting lipo and a tummy tuck or something like that and you're gonna be looking like Beyonce no ma'am you probably gonna be looking like the Michelin man deflated because all that fat is gonna be gone but it's still gonna be skin left so some people don't you know think about stuff like that and have an idea that they gonna come out looking like you know like they uh one of these instagram models and it's not gonna happen boo boo it's okay though like you could work on getting there but this surgery alone is i don't think if that's if that's what you expect and that's unrealistic so getting psychological clearance pretty much is just making sure you aware and you're you know gonna be comfortable with it and you won't end up like trying to commit suicide or something like that um what else i had to do pulmonary the supervised diet oh um so with my surgeon i had to do two appointments with his dietitian one was a um new a nutrition class or whatever yeah like a group of like six people with her and then a, a month afterwards you did an individual appointment with just the nutrition nutritionist dietitian whatever by yourself so i did those and what else did i have to do oh i had to get an upper gi oh my god the junk with that white stuff on my mouth was so disgusting you had to drink barium and it's like really thick sludge like imagine if you grinded up some chalk and added a little bit of water to it and it's like so thick and they make you drink it while they taking like x-rays of your stomach to see you know i don't know if they want to see the shape of it they want to make sure like um you don't have ulcers or like the lining of the stomach is okay, all of that stuff, just so they could be aware of what they're getting themselves into before they go in there and start chopping shit up. So that was okay, but I will warn y'all because nobody told me this until I had to figure it out myself and start Googling stuff to realize and understand that I wasn't tripping. After you drink barium, you will be boo-booing like freaking, how do I explain it? It's like you boo-booing clay. I'm so happy like the first number two that I took after it I was at home and it started getting light brown and to the tip of it was kind of white like they tell you that your boo will be white for like 24 to 48 hours afterwards 
So the next day I'm at work and it's in the morning and I had to go. So I go use the restroom and I did a number two. Y'all tell me why I'm trying to flush this toilet and the junk will not go down. It's stuck to the toilet. Like it was literally like a mound of white. It looked like like somebody threw some white clay in the toilet, like just a little chunk of white clay and just sat in the toilet. And I flushed that toilet like 10 times, legit. I'm not exaggerating. I kept flushing it and it would just turn the water white and then flush and then it would still be stuck to the toilet. So I'm Googling it because I'm like, bro, I do not want to call these folks toilet up at work. And I Googled it and it was saying, I guess, I don't know the density of um, the barium or whatever it is, like you gonna have to get something in like take it off the toilet and uh, it wasn't no plungers or nothing like that in there so I just kept like throughout the day I kept going in there flushing it and it was still stuck so I was like you know what I'm sorry um miss janitor or mr janitor whoever it is but I ain't sticking my hand in that toilet like it'll disintegrate one of these days anyway so yeah so when you have your upper GI be aware that if you about to boo boo like Maybe line some toilet, get some uh, pieces of toilet paper and sit it on the top of the water so that when you boo-boo, the boo-boo will hit the top of the toilet paper in the toilet and then hurry up and flush it. Flush that shit ASAP because I don't want nobody clogging their toilets up and don't say I ain't warn you because ain't nobody warn me so I'm warning y'all now. But what else I did after Upper GI? I think that's it. <sighs> I don't have my list with me. But I took pictures, I tried to take pictures at just about every appointment that I went to. Oh, my first thing I had to go to before I had my first appointment with the surgeon, I had to go to um, a seminar just about like gastric bypass, um, the sleeve and lap band and um, dual dental switch, all four weight loss surgeries, whatever. So I went to the seminar after that, I had my first appointment with the surgeon. And he just asked you like about medical history, which surgery you want to have, basic stuff like that. After you finish all your appointments and get approved for surgery, then um, you have your post, no, pre-op appointment. So my pre-op appointment pretty much, um, I went to went back to the surgeon. They just checked my weight again. They took my picture. Um, it was just basic stuff and then I had another pre-op which was actually at the hospital. They did an EKG, um, they drew blood to find my blood type so that any event that I have to get blood drawn, they already know before my surgery what my blood type is so they make sure that they have it at the hospital just in case, you know, I end up having to get a blood transfusion which 9 times out of 10 won't happen, I pray to God that it don't. But yeah, um, they do that and they do a pregnancy test. And um, you talk to the anesthesiologist and the, one of the nurses. And pretty much that's it. They gave me um, some chlorhexidine to bathe with. In the morning, I have to bathe with it before I go to the hospital. And it's just like an antimicrobial solution. It won't soap up. It won't set up. So I bathe first with my Dove. And then just pretty much wash my skin with it. But you're not supposed to use it on your vagina or your butt or your face. So just the skin mainly on your stomach or wherever you know they'll be doing the surgery at so I have to bathe with that and then they told me um like which medications you can take and which ones you can't so after tonight after midnight I won't be able to eat or drink anything and since yesterday um 40 the 48 hours well not 48 hours but the whole two days before your surgery you have to go into a clear liquid diet and I'm going to just sit this up here. You can pause it and read it if you want to. But pretty much. But all I've been drinking is white grape juice and water. That's it. And um, the day before surgery, which is today, you have to drink three tablespoons of milk of magnesia before noon. And so I drank that earlier at work. And pretty much, yeah, that's about it. So I am going to vlog. In the morning, um, after I get ready, on my way to the hospital, like, while they're preparing me and stuff, because my surgery is at noon, but I have to be there at 10 o'clock, so I guess they can, like, get my IV set up, um, get me in the gown, do all whatever stuff they gotta do before, um, the surgery actually starts. So, yeah. I'm gonna bring y'all with me. 
um i'll probably do the first couple days or maybe like vlog my first week after surgery and record that and then maybe do like a monthly update or maybe i'll just because i know i'm gonna take pictures every month maybe i'll just wait a couple months and then like group it up like first three months whatever i don't know because i don't want to say i'm gonna do a video every week or a video every month because i know i'm not super consistent with youtube as you can see from the last time i posted a video so yeah but i will definitely keep y'all updated with this whole surgery thing because it's not like i actually have to like do anything in the video i'm just really talking so yep I will see y'all in the morning. Pray for me. Thanks.